Hello, I'm Yummy Mommy and welcome. This is the third of a series I'm calling For Your Health. Today we're going to talk about ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. Now I have, these are some bottles that I have um, in my house. You know, these are the things I actually use to um, make sure that I have the things that I need to take care of myself and to keep up my health. So I have, you see that I have a half teaspoon on there. I put a half teaspoon of it in my smoothies. I have a smoothie practically every morning. Now, my philosophy is I don't do anything past 12 weeks. And after 12 weeks, I give myself a break from it. Because sometimes we can overtake items and they start having an adverse effect. And then we get back on the media again talking about Oh my goodness, and it just did this, and it did that. You have to remember that we talked about in the second segment about us not being able to have a rude conversation with our body and the things that make our body work. And the only thing that the body understands is the signaling. And so then it takes a minute for the body to figure out that you're taking something. Then it needs to figure out where I need to store that that you're taking. Then it needs to remember then now and figure out what you intended for it to do with that. Okay. So that's why people find out to take things. But it's taking you a lifetime to get sick. Maybe 20, 30 years to get sick. And then you discover I could take this and I could take that. But if you have very little time. Sometimes you can't turn around 30 years of something, you know, that you have been doing to maybe contribute to a problem and then turn that around in 12 weeks or a year. You have to have time to try to turn something around and then you have to have time agreed by God that is not your time yet, you know. That also is an additional thing that you need to know. But Ashwagandha, of course, is kind of like a bark, but then again, it also looks like a little tuber, you know, like it looks, you know, but people pound it up into powder and they do what you, what I told you that I do is I put mine in a smoothie. And ashwagandha uh, can do several things uh, for uh, your body. Now, it's said to be good in the production of testosterone. Now, you might say, what, first of all, is testosterone? Testosterone, Of course, you have to look that up. But women have estrogen and, some, and progesterone, and men have testosterone. Those are the things that help you define uh, maleness or femaleness. Now, don't get caught up in that, okay? Because understand something. The world uh, operates on a directive, okay? And it's not bad to be a girl. That's not a sin if you're a girl. It's not a sin if you're a boy. So don't get confused in that. Change from one to the other, you're still a girl, you're still a boy, okay? So if someone leaves you a pamphlet to take care of maybe a refrigerator you bought, that means that that person is not in the house with you, okay? And we've been left a great big old pamphlet that we read and sometimes misinterpret and sometimes have thrown it around and we start being mean to people and the father told us that's not our job. He decides what is what, who gets what, who can't have what and all that. That's his job. But sometimes, you know, as human beings, we get involved in different things. So when you bring up a word like testosterone or you bring up a word like estrogen. People start getting all stretched out of shape. Okay? Now, I'm not advocating for one thing or the other, but what I do know 
is that this is your science. And stuff happens. People are born with both uh, sexual organs. If you follow genetic development, sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. And that's just that. And some, the, and at the end result, somebody got to fix it. If your child is born with heart disease, somebody got to fix that. You see what I'm saying? They grew in your stomach, but it didn't come together. And so they fix it. Nobody says anything. So sometimes, you know, people grow together and it didn't come out right. And so then some, they fix it. That's it. You know, we don't have to fight each other over that. Well, you know, you grow and do what you want to do. But oftentimes, too, nowadays, I do not know why. I think they say it's because men are wearing tighter clothing and a lot of stuff is too warm. People spend time in the, in the hot tub. Or if the children just start developing correctly. Like sometimes the boy doesn't make the leap into pu puberty. Sometimes the girl doesn't make it. So there's not enough of different things being produced. And so it also happens that a lot of men... Are the cause that why that the wives can't have children? They just don't have a development of things that are properly to be able to swim or produce a, a good enough amount. This as ashwagandha can help you with the production of uh, testosterone. Now, nothing is for certain, but this is what it says that it has a tendency to do. Again, we're reminding you that I'm not asking you to take anything. I'm not telling you to take anything. I'm not encouraging you to take anything. Go to your doctor and find out what is the thing that is okay for you to take. And remember to ask about things you may not know. Remember to get full blood panels, you know, and then look up and see what may be present in your family history. Because who you are is in your blood. You see? It's your medical history is in your blood. And your genetic history is in your blood. What your grandparents had, who your grandparents was, what your grandparents did, you see what I'm saying? The actions that they took, all of that marks your blood. And the medical history can be passed on, and so can your genetic history. So you need to see someone to ask about that. And remember, we talked about two in the first and second episode. We talked about looking up words, what you may have been using words for years and not realize that you don't know everything that they mean. Knowing the understanding of the definition of words can help to save your life or save someone in your family's life. Understanding what medical professionals are saying to you goes a long way with helping them to respect you. You see? And maybe you might get blessed in a way they might be more willing to be helpful to you. Because sometimes a lot of things are said to other people that are not said to some people because that person doesn't know how to engage on that level. So we don't want to be found wanting and we don't want to be found lacking where our help is concerned. So visit the doctor, okay? Find out what you should do for you. Make sure you understand the words that are being said to you when the doctor is talking. So brush up on some terms or what you think they might be. And just in everyday language, just look up words. So you can make sure that you know what people are saying to you and what should be said back to them in the appropriate context. You see what I'm saying? And make sure you are as well versed as you possibly can to ask questions about your situation. And so that you can know different ways that you can adapt to make your life better and the life of your legacy, which is your children or those who you love in your life. Now, cortisol reduction or stress reduction. Now, let's tell you something about this. Ashwagandha is usually the first thing people say. Stress reduction helps you sleep, lowers the temperature in your temperament helps with uh, the welfare of the brain and mental health. So you want to, people take it very quickly for that. <laughs> usually they usually just, that's it. That's enough. That's all they need to know about it. It is an antidepressant, you see. 
what is said to be an antidepressant, okay? I can't tell you anything for certain, but many people take ashwagandha just for the antidepressant, the lowering, lowering in cortisol, because when you produce too much of that, you're producing stress. And so it helps to regulate that. So try to keep you calm, try to keep you interacting, you know, in the way that things are happening in the nation today. I think a lot of people need a little cortisol reduction. <laughs> it's not funny because people are losing their lives. I don't mean that to make their life, but you need a few things, you know, that might assist with that. So now it builds muscle mass. Now you need that because especially as you get older, the, the way your, the way you, you know, if your body builds, of course, there's muscle mass, but it gets important as you grow older because it influences the way your, your ability to move, you see? Your ability to be able to, for your muscle to hold on to your, around your bones and hold on to the joints and help you to be able to move in a way that's still smooth. Because sometimes, I never will forget when my father got past 80. He just started taking little tiny steps. I was just stunned, you know. And when I saw Paul Mooney, you know, one of you know, and he he had said earlier, and I believe they asked him when he wrote his book, uh, and that he would say, "You're now you're seventy one," and she told him, "Say I'm well, I'm over, I'm well older than that." When he passed away recently, they said he was seventy nine. But when I saw him last, he was retiring like my dad was. That man was over 80 when he died. But, you know, he said he was born in a house, which means he didn't have a birth certificate. So they probably put what they want, what they wanted to put on it, you see, or what they remember. Because, you know, you have a baby, nobody writes it down. Nobody's clear about when everything happened. You know, they got to try to connect it to the tree that came up and snow that fell down and the cloud that came out. You know, you remember? <laughs> so, you know, he's he was like eight or nine years old, or maybe at least five years older than what they say he was. So he died in 79, but he was 80 something if he was a day. So he lived a wonderfully long life. But, you know, you can't, you know, how long you want to live. It's up to you what you consider as long. I don't want to take that life of it. You know, fine gentlemen. Um, yes, and so it helps in weight loss. It reduces body fat. You understand? Because um, in this time that I was, I was um, a, was in a hospital bed. Of course, you know there was some weight gain, but I'm not mad at it because I'm here. I can worry about that now. <laughs> Because if you're not here, you're going to definitely lose weight. So it won't be a problem. No need of you getting all upset and excited about it because you are going to definitely lose weight if you're no longer breathing. Okay? So we have to keep it moving, keep it breathing, keep it happy. Okay? So we'll just meet those things. But these are some things that can help you. Now, what I learned over the years was I never tried to adjust my food because I, I tried that at first. And I quickly figured out that I was a nutrient dense, nutrient minerals and vitamins. That's what I needed. You see. And once I became nutrient dense, when I started taking in a lot of these different powders and my smoothie, my smoothie every day for 12 weeks of break and then start again, you know, three or four weeks break and then start again. Um, after a while, my appetite began to reduce. And believe it or not, I've lost some weight. Okay. And I'm continuing to lose. Because once my body trusted me to feed it, it wasn't hungry. If you are hungry, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, but in my opinion, in my experience, it's because you're not nutrient dense. You have to keep eating and taking these powders and taking, I had to take additional vitamins too. And I'm going to tell you about those a little ways from here in another segment, you see. And once I got caught up with more nutrient density, um, I mean, went way down. And so now I just eat regularly. I eat anything I want to eat, but I just don't eat a lot of it. And then the high quality of food that I purchased, you see, it began to, I got a higher value of nutrient from that food. 
If you can't afford to buy high quality food, just buy a little bit of time. This is how I started. I would set aside fifty or sixty dollars, get me a good piece of uh, salmon and a good something else. Okay, and then I'd get some quality vegetables going, so I good good asparagus, and I may spend seventy dollars and got two two pieces of good meat and four expensive vegetables. And my kids, we sit and we ate that. And the same thing happened with them. You know, once I start buying a better quality of food, you have to buy a better quality of food because you can't just take these powders and not have better quality of food. And I know that the father said the reason why I went on and started buying it, even when I couldn't afford it. You see what I'm saying? Because the father promised me that he was going to give me the things I need. And I need quality food. If you think that quality food is an option, you may not get it. He said, he's going to give me all the things I need. And I need quality food. I need to be healthy. I need to look good. I need to dress nice. I need to have money in my pocket. I need all of that. And that's not a gimmick. The way you think, if you're thinking in positive ways, will save you. It will save you. But you have to be aware of the re- uh, iteration of the Bible. Some of that stuff is jumbled up, mixed up, making problems where there are none. Okay, and so you can get caught up in that and you won't move forward. You know, let God do God and you do what you're supposed to do. You have to recognize what is God's problem because the whole of your existence is about you and your family and your legacy. If you neglect that, trying to tend to business in somebody else's house, you may fall down. And if you fall down, your whole future line is going to fall down with you. That's important. You need to think about that. We were the arbiters and the, the, the holders of the begats. Family has always been big to us. The griots, they knew everybody who had was somebody's daddy. They talked about that. And lineage and being connected and furthering the, your existence of your family has always been top with African peoples. And we're beginning to maybe step back from that, and I don't think that's good. Okay? You have your time. You live in your life, even in, on to the end. But then those that come after you got to live their life too. And you're supposed to make it easier. It's not supposed to be a cinder path that's full of coals that they got to walk through all of the, the bad things that you left behind. You're supposed to leave something better. And you can begin by getting healthier and teaching your children good health. Because you got to be here to make a difference. You got to be here to make a difference, dear. It's something you can tell these children as they grow up. It's something you can remind them of. I remember when my mother used to get her grandchildren. And she would take them to the mirror. She did us that the same way. And she put her hand in the mirror. She said, we're black. And she touched her face. Had a baby touch her face. I'm black. You're black. And we're beautiful. Your mama black. <laughs> we're all beautiful. We're all beautiful. Because you have to counteract the idea that other people, other races of people, teach them that you bad from the time they're little kids. Because every time they mother, draw them close, squeeze them. You understand? Every time you pass by, they're teaching that kid that you, you're bad because they squeezing the baby tight, turning the baby. The baby knows from three months old, when they see somebody that looks like you, then that's bad. And when you don't respect yourself and your children have to learn who they are from somebody else in a negative way when they get to school, then they learn that you, I'm, I'm not sure you care about me. You didn't protect me from this pain. And that's the ultimate job for parents. You see? So you need to teach your children who they are before somebody else teaches them who they aren't. Okay? So you need to learn habits, incorporate habits that protect your children. I'm going to tell you one more story and I'm going to go back to what I'm trying to tell you about Ashwagandha. When my son came home heartbroken, he saw a woman, a black woman, say to her, baby, that's why your daddy don't want you. Please don't call your children the B word, the H word. And one lady called her baby little hooker. 
The baby, 18 months old. And so then when you put the black doll and the white doll in front of the baby, the baby picks the white doll because who's looking out for any? You have to learn how to love your children. That all begins at home. And colorism begins at home. My sons and my daughter spoke with a beautiful, uh, a beautiful rhythmic speech that was beautiful. They still do. And my brother came in the house and started making fun of them. And I shut it down. My children are who they are. They don't talk white. What is talking white? Cockney, because that's what white people speak. A broken English. You see, when they came over here, they spoke a broken English. That's why you speak a broken English. So speaking appropriate English is something that black people established. Have you ever heard a, a Tuskegee Airman speak? Like he just stepped off a 1939 film studio. Black people always spoke well, but we don't seem to remember that. Don't let people call your kids ugly, ugly black. That's your job as the parent to step in and stop it. You can't then get out here and say, oh, look what y'all did with colorism. You, that starts at home. You have to stop people from doing things that make your children sad. And stop them from interrupting them from being intelligent. It's your job to let the child be great. Ashwagandha boosts metabolism. Remember, we talked autoimmune. If you're autoimmune, you got to be careful of that. And it's a sport enhancer of performance. You see, gives you the start from the, you can get out of the out of the, out of the little things they have when you're running. You can move fast, and it helps you to do. And it can help with uh, fertility. That's with the man and the woman because it gives you all of these different things that can help you build the body, and so that helps you gives you a greater chance of being fertile. It reduces blood sugar. This is one more thing I want to say. Remember, different ones of these that reduce blood sugar are that lower the blood pressure. Because if you take too many of these powders that do that together, especially if you on blood pressure medicine or if you on a diabetic medicine, you can make your blood pressure too low or it can make the sugar too low. So you don't want to take these things without going to the doctor. Remember, I told you before, I don't want to tell you to do something. I'm not asking you to do something. And I'm not trying to make you to do something. You decide what you want to do. The only thing that I'm doing is telling you a little information that I know that helped me. But you go to the doctor and you ask him what it is that they think you should be doing, what will help you do your blood panel, make sure you keep up with how much fat you have in your kidneys or liver, make sure your heart is not congested with fluids and other things, the valves are working, everything is working, and circulation is so, so important. Blood is so important. So you got to keep up with these kinds of things. And here we go again, that word inflammation. Inflammation can be the hotbed of disease. When you start retaining water and retaining pus or retaining phlegm, uh, getting sore joints, swelling, slight fever, warming, all of those things can grow things we don't want and can age as quickly than we much more than we want it to be. It improves memory because I had, it, the, my brain had been jostled around. Uh, I When I came home straight, didn't know. I don't want to tell you how deep it was. I'll have to tell you another time. I could turn my head and I didn't know where I was. Yep. Mm hmm Sure did. That happened. Uh, helps you sleep and it improves your sexual interest, of course. So, ashwagandha is something that can really be helpful to you if you have decided that you want to take it and you got the okay from people who know and can help you decide. I hope that you 
take a moment and get some of these powders. Now, I often get them from Thrive Market. I like them because they have excellent quality. They're organic. And they the price, you can't beat it. You can't beat the prices. Now, they don't cover everything, so I have to go on to Amazon. And that's where I get most other of my um, herbs. Now, this stuff can get pricey. And you want to try to make sure that you get organic herbs because you don't want stuff with pesticides in it and different things that may cause more harm than good. So you might get a good uh, thing that could really help you, but it's not organically raised. It's not covered by, they may be spraying stuff with pesticides. And so that may, that may we don't know for certain, override uh, the benefit. We want to make sure that we take care. And when I say get pretty pricey, I'm talking about $21, you know, or a pound or two. You know, that might not be a lot to you, but yeah, you get, when you buy two or three or four of them after a while, you see all the ones I got. You know, I spent a little bit, but I'm talking to you and I remember what I'm saying. <laughs> so I think it was well worth the price. In addition to that, I want you to consider facials, massages. You know, you can buy you a Swedish bell or get things for your feet, the feet, little feet, wooden feet massages that rub back and forth. Those things are under $11, sometimes under $10, under $20. But it's very important to get your blood circulating. Of course, there's a lot going on. But if you're able to get out and take a walk or do any form of exercise in that way, you get that blood circulating. We're going to talk in the future about things that help the skin and help to keep us from drooping and help us to combination of things that grow your hair because my hair fell completely out. Okay. And as you can see, it's back. <laughs> It's back. You know, you saw earlier where I said I was going to dye my hair. And it looked kind of red. It came back blonde. But it was already blonde. So it is. We weren't giving up the blonde. <laughs> so it kind of keep it. But it did kind of tone it down a bit. I, I like it, you know. But it has grown so much uh, within the last few months. So I've been doing a combination of different herbs that I'm going to tell you about. That actually work. That you can put them in your body, which is what I did. But also, you can put them directly on your hair if you want to do that, too. Well, remember to praise God for all that he does for us. And I want to say that I am really enjoying these uh, For Your Health segments. I hope that you are, too. Give me a heart, a wave in the comments. And tell me some good things, some good items that you want me to know, some wonderful news that you want me to know. Because listen, we need a moment to be kind to each other. We can hope for it, but some people just don't roll like that, so it may not happen. But for those of us that do roll like that, let's, let's, let's raise our hands. Say hello, say something kind. Try to be kind. Try to be tolerant. We're in a whole movement where we're trying to encourage people through Black Lives Matter to be tolerant. It won't be very nice if we can't be tolerant with one another. Love yourself. Love your family. See you next time.